What are some of the latest endpoint security trends and imperatives? Hi, I'm Matthew Schwartz with Information Security Media Group. And to help me answer that question, it's my pleasure to welcome Nico Van Summeren, CTO of Absolute Software, to the virtual ISMG studio. Nico, thanks for taking time to be with us today. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. So the last year, we've seen obviously the COVID-19 pandemic really change how many organizations have to conduct their work. And this has a big impact on endpoint security, obviously with working from home, especially for a lot of organizations throughout the pandemic. Arguably, we have an opportunity now to do the right thing. But to say that, we should probably also ask, what were the wrong things that we were doing before, do you think? So uh, I, mean, I think we're in fact already starting to do many of the right things. Uh, there was a fascinating report out from McKinsey right uh, towards the beginning of the uh, pandemic, I guess back in July last year, when uh, they said that uh, after surveying a bunch of CIOs, they'd concluded that we'd moved forward approximately five years in IT in the space of 10 weeks. Uh, yeah, there's been a, a fairly radical transformation. I think that you know, the, the wrong things that we were doing were, were failing to anticipate the fact that you know, many of the, the movements that happened were really movements that were already in progress. They just got accelerated. Uh, we were moving towards uh, cloud-centric uh, software uh, for our applications rather than on-premises applications. We were moving towards increasing levels of hybrid working and remote working in a lot of organizations, even though we didn't see anywhere near the levels that we were then forced to take up uh, rather quickly. Uh, and so I think that some of the things that we were doing wrong were to do with failing to anticipate these transformations or failing to embrace them and understand that they were going to necessitate some changes in the way that we approach security, uh, particularly around access control and identity management and network protection needing to be at the transport layer rather than at the perimeter layer. And those transformations were already in progress. They just got accelerated massively by the pandemic. So we're seeing an acceleration, as you're saying, I love that statistic or observation, if you will, that in the space of a few weeks, things that would normally have taken years happened. Are there any particular areas where we still need improvement, despite what we've been seeing in a positive vein recently? Absolutely. I mean, in the field of security, there's almost always room for improvement. Uh, I think that one of the things that we've observed uh, is that, uh, Actually, Charles Blaumer, who was the uh, CISO of Citigroup for many years, had a great saying, which was that there were the two questions that typically get asked by CISOs, you know, what are the risks and threats that we face? And then, you know, secondly, what are the, the tools that we can put in place and deploy to try to manage and ameliorate those risks, mitigate those risks? Um, but the third question he always uh, mentioned was the one that people fail to ask enough, which is having deployed all of those security tools, are they actually functioning? And, and I think that the area that we need to improve most in this post-pandemic world uh, is really around making sure that the, the technology that we deploy at the edge is functioning properly. Uh, you know, it used to be that if I had a problem with my uh, operational IT, then I would walk over to IT or I'd have them come over to me and they would you know, hit my computer with a hammer or whatever it is that IT do. Um, or if there was a, an out of date application and I was on the LAN, I could just use SCCM or whatever tool that I deployed to update that application. Now that these endpoints are not in the building, now these endpoints are out in the wild in, the, in, in a much uh, uh, more potentially hostile environment, but certainly not as connected directly, 
Um, it's critical for IT to be able to tell that your applications are fully patched and fully functioning. It's critical for security to know that your access control tools, your identity tools are fully patched and fully functioning. And it's critical that they have this visibility into the efficacy of your networking, of your applications, of your security controls. Uh, and so that ability to monitor and get the visibility and get the data around what's going on still needs to be improved because we've pushed a lot of stuff out of the door and into people's homes, uh, but we didn't necessarily do that in a way that gives us all of the visibility and insight into how they're still working. And that has the potential for these security controls to get out of compliance and us to not notice in the process. So you talked about the need for visibility and also you know, knowing what is going on. Does that factor into your view of the future of work, so to speak? Because obviously we're looking at some sort of phased return in some cases or other ways of working that maybe we don't quite know about yet. So as you look forward, because obviously you've got to think about this to help organizations stay secure. Um, how does the future of work affect the discussion that we're having here? Well, I think it's, it's very important to understand that the future of work is the sort of natural progression of this trend that, as I said, we were seeing before, but which accelerated. You know, I think it's going to be hybrid at both ends. And by that, I mean that uh, we're not going to send all of our employees en masse back to the office all the time. They're going to almost certainly be going back to a hybrid working environment in which uh, you know, you've got some people in the office all the time, you've got some people at home all the time, you've got some people who drift back and forth, you've got some people who've decided that they wanted to move to Phuket instead of uh, Plymouth, and so they are going to be, you know, in a different time zone. We've got all of these, that we, we, so we're going to have a hybrid working environment on the employee end, but we're also going to continue our migration to a hybrid environment of a few remaining long tail on-premises applications and an increasingly large number of in-cloud applications. So that hybrid at both ends world does require us to think more about how do we secure the data? How do we secure the movement of that data? And how do we identify and securely uh, control who has access to what parts of that corporate data. And that's almost certainly gonna move us more in this sort of zero trust type of deperimatization where we don't necessarily think about perimeter security as much as when a connection comes in, how do we know who it is? How do we know where the data is going? How do we know that it's gonna be safe when it gets there? Uh, those sorts of uh, of controls that we have to put in place at the application end, and also how do those relate to the state of the endpoint and, and what the situation is at the place that this data is going to end up. So seeking a sense of assurance, so to speak, that just because you have controls or you, you think you have things, are they functioning? There, there's a, a phrase that repeats in Absolute's research uh, about decaying endpoint controls. I love that phrase because just because you've got the control doesn't mean that it's going to be working for you the way that you thought it might be in a few days, in a few weeks, in a few months, you have to keep revisiting it. Uh, so obviously things keep changing. Uh, the way that organizations and users are using unprotected sensitive data, new ways come up that this gets traded. So. I think we've touched on this a little bit, but going forward, how are organizations looking to get a better handle on decaying endpoint controls? How's that been changing? Is it just that they need to revisit it with a regular frequency? I, I think that, well, I, I, I think it's worth digging into the data a little bit more to sort of understand the problem. Um, for years, we've had this uh, uh, endpoint uh, trends report that we create. Um, absolute software sits on, you know, of the order of 10 million endpoints out in the field, and it collects a lot of information for the IT and security organizations in the customers who, who deploy this. 
but we also get to collect a certain amount of anonymized data that we can then use to look at aggregate trends and work out which way things are going. And you know, we continue to see a lot of the, the trends that we were detecting prior to the pandemic. Some of them are getting worse. Uh, most of them, in fact, are getting worse. Uh, so for instance, uh, you know, we know that the majority of our customers have a huge fraction of their population running uh, machines that are, are more than 90 days out of date on patches. Um, you know, so just over half of our uh, of the devices under management. It's actually slightly better on Windows 10, uh, but on a tip on 40% of the Windows 10 devices that we analyzed had over a thousand known vulnerabilities unpatched. Um, now some of these may be very minor, but plenty are, are relatively major. So uh, knowing that it's out of date is important, but actually being able to do something about it is critical. Um, the other part of this is that as people have moved out of the office, we've actually seen an increase in the amount of sensitive data that gets detected on the endpoints. Uh, so for instance, we have uh, uh, some endpoint data discovery tools in our, in our platform. We don't get to see the discovered data, but we get statistics about it. And we see that 73% of the endpoints that we're analyzing in this last survey um, were uh, holding PII or healthcare information or financial information. And those, um, uh, those levels were rising uh, already prior to the pandemic, but they went up significantly as people moved out of the office because people I think were feeling like it was more important to download that document rather than look at it on the screen when the bandwidth of the connection wasn't as high as it was on the LAN. And then finally, we also see that, uh, as you, you mentioned, there are these decaying endpoint controls. Uh, it's a sad fact that if you don't regularly check the configuration, we find a lot of applications uh, configuration goes out of compliance, uh, whether some other tool switches it off. We often see anti-malware and antivirus software fighting against each other. Um, sometimes it's uh, users get frustrated by some process that's taking up some CPU and they kill it. Uh, sometimes uh, it's things like there's a, a, a failure in a software update process, which switches something off before the update process happens, but fails to switch it back on. So all of these cause a degradation. And over time, we see a half-life in these, uh, the availability of these tools. And so it's, it's critical for enterprises to be able to both see that these things are happening, but also to do something about it and to deploy tools which can actually repair those problems, ideally without either user or IT invent, intervention, because those people, those endpoints are not in the office anymore. Fascinating. So these recaps from your uh, 2021 endpoint security health trends report. So find the devices that need patching, get them patched. Find the users working with sensitive data, get it secured. And uh, you know, for the decaying endpoint controls, combat those aggressively so that you actually are bringing controls to bear. Fascinating. Well, interesting insights very actionable as well for organizations. Nico, thank you so much for uh, sharing your, your insights into these latest endpoint security trends and imperatives with us today. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. I have been speaking with Nico Van Summeren of Absolute Software. I'm Matthew Schwartz with Information Security Media Group. Thank you for joining us.